So everyone and welcome to another How Good Art. Today we're going to talk about, well, some characters who might have potential once they're uncapped and one character who is uncapped who we're going to have to figure out do they actually make use of their potential or are they maybe actually pretty goddamn terrible and maybe not that amazing. We're going to start off today with a character that most people don't really know much about. It's Meguru. So who is Meguru? Meguru is a sort of radio announcer sort of host type, the kind of type who is maybe a little bit like me, who is like, hello and welcome today, we're going to talk about this amazing stuff. Like she, she really likes talking and commentating and like sort of hosting radio events. Like she's the kind of character who might go to a sporting event just to take the microphone and then just be like the commentator for that sporting event, uh, being like, um, and here we see number three on the ball, kicking it straight over to number three, who is going to have a great day, like that sort of character, and because I'm a little bit like that, I can kind of understand where this character is coming from, but of course, uh, since this is uh, basically an anime, she way overdoes it, which is also why her weapon is just a finger on a stick, that's the weapon. Um, so she is, she is a support type with two Excel discs, two charge discs, and because she's currently still capped at four star and she's a support type, because stats aren't that great, but I will say that if she ever gets uncapped to five star, her stats might actually be at least somewhat decent. Like her stats at least look somewhat salvageable. Like they're just sort of average across the board. Like average HP, average attack, average defense, like for a four star. Uh, which make, gives me hope that if she does get uncapped to a five star, uh, especially with spirit enhancement, at least her stats won't be that goddamn awful, but they will still be sort of on the lower end. So sort of more on the acceptable range of the lower end, if you get what I mean. Now, <coughs> because she's a support type and because we know she's supportive, be very supportive to basically everyone, uh, we can see that her connect is kind of supportive to everyone. Uh, uh, so it gives just a bonus to every single disc there is. Um, although, to be fair, it gives one bonus to uh, Excel up and two bonuses to Blast up. Because don't get this, don't get me wrong, charged attack damage up is basically another Blast up in disguise. So we have two Blast up bonuses, one Excel, a bonus. Um, is this good? Usually not, because here's the thing, if you're playing a full-on blast team, just 70% blast up on a connect is not good enough for a hyper blast team. Usually you want a connect that does both blast up and something else, like and attack up for example, as a lot of good blast connects do. Uh, or and if you're an Excel Gorilla, maybe you want to have also on there an attack up or a damage up so that when you actually do get to Magia and you use your Magia, so that you can increase the damage of your Magia with a connect. That is really awesome if you can do that. Uh, or if you can heal, and you can do sort of do like Magia stalling sort of tactics, that's also really good. But just 30% Excel and up, not good enough. If you're playing a charge team, it's pretty alright actually, because you get, the, uh, get to use both of these bonuses on that charge team, but do you want to use a character like this on a charge team instead of a charge gorilla or sister momoko or a, a pure on super damage dealer who can actually make use of those charge points for damage i feel like you just can't fit her on a bla uh, on a charge team over other characters right even mayu will probably do better uh, as a supportive character on a charge team compared to this so i feel like she just doesn't fit on any team and this is kind of the problem that you have when you try to fit on every team you end up fitting on no team because if you try to fit on every team there will be so many characters who specifically are good for these specific teams that those get picked instead over this a character like this that is good at everything but a master of none check of all traits master of none what about the magia will we see the same thing with the magia yes it gives attack up to all us and defense up to all, all allies which is actually kind of alright, and I think this is probably the uh, the best thing about her, is that she has an attack up to all allies Magia. There's always something that, just by having an attack up to all allies Magia, is something that makes every single unit that has this pretty decent already, pretty decent already. Um, it's a very important effect to have, and the defense up is a nice bonus, I guess, if you're using, if you're doing on a PvP, ch a PvE challenges, like if you're doing 100 evils, for example, having a, a Magia that also gives you defense up on top of your damage is pretty awesome to have. 
What about the spin enhancement? Well, we see a bunch of basic bonuses, nothing too special. Skill quicken because you support, good. Uh, Anti-skill seal, also all right. Uh, and then we see damage cut, also good to have to survive a bit longer. But nothing really too special, nothing too special at all on the passives whatsoever. More importantly though, uh, the active is pretty good. It gives 26.3, what a number, 26.3? Why not 25 or 27, like any of those, uh, percent defense up? And Stellar's aim resistance up 15% for three turns. And that's the important part. To all allies, for three turns, it gives these bonuses. If it was just to self or for just one turn, this wouldn't be that great. But to have a bonus like this for three turns, it's pretty darn good. So her active is actually quite solid to play a more so defensive style. And I guess if you are playing her uh, on a team where she is supposed to be a, a sort of someone who can be a little bit aggressive with maybe the attack up on the Magia, while at the same time providing defensive bonuses with the defense up on uh, the active and the Magia, that can be quite all right. But that said, still not that strong of an identity because what I just described is something that you're not really looking for. Not at all. Usually you look for straight up super duper damage dealers or uh, and... Usually when you're looking for stalling, there are specific stalling characters that can do that for you way better than Meguru could. So she's not the best at anything. But if you are, for example, a new account and you would like to have a support that just works on most teams, this would be fine if she was uncapped. So because she's not currently, because she's currently capped at 4 star and she's not a 5 star yet, She's kind of suffering from the fact that all of her effects, everything that she does on her connect, everything she does on her magia, isn't as strong as it could be compared to five stars who get just more or stronger bonuses on their connect and magia because they are five star. So that's kind of holding her back a little bit. It's also holding back her stats a little bit. So I will still at least say if you're looking for an all rounder support on a really on a really poor account on a fresh account on an account that has basically nothing, but you're still looking for an all rounder support. If Meguru ever gets uncapped, she would be a pretty good choice for that. But that's uh, not that amazing. If you look at her uh, active uh, personal, it gives attack down to self because I guess um, she's like um, busy broadcasting messages to her friends about like encouraging them. She's broadcasting encouraging messages to your team. I guess that's sort of what the lore behind this personal is. So she gives attack down to herself, which doesn't matter much. She, she's not supposed to do damage, right? She's just there to buff other people. Her damage doesn't really matter much. So are the buffs good enough? It gives blast damage up to all allies 20% and magic damage up to all allies 10.5%. Once again, same thing with her connect. For a blast team, this is not enough at all. 20% blast up to someone else? It's just terrible. It's awful. Um, and if you're a magia team, just 7.5% magic damage up is fucking nothing, it's awful. So it's too bad for a blast team, it's too bad for a magia team. You wouldn't play her on a team that does both, because if you're playing a team that does both, what fucking team are you playing? Uh, so yeah, once again, not a good personal. But you can kind of see where the problem lies with Meguru just by looking at this personal. Next up we have the Auric. A lot of people make fun of her for being an orc. In case you're wondering why do people make fun of her for being an orc, first off, she's a nature addict, she's like a hippie, nature hippie, tree hugger kind of stuff. But more importantly, look at her stance. She wears, she has two axes, and she's like, rrr, 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 rrr. this is an orc stance. This is a sort of stance and facial expression that you would see on an orc. Like if you took exactly the same stance and facial expression and Copy pasted it on an orc, you'd be like, yeah, that's an orc, that's a that's an orc, alright. Um That's that's the orc magical girl. So um she's a nature hippie, which means that she's of course type of balance with two XLS2 charge discs. Um the signer is U35. The reason I point that out is because I have no idea who that is and I've never heard this name before. But they're alright, I mean this sounds fine. This sounds totally fine. Um apart from the It feels like her elbow is broken and not her elbow her shoulder is broken whatever so this is a personal and it, it might at first glance look like wait a second attack up mp gain up she's supposed to be someone who is an offensive character that wants to get to magia an offensive magia focused character seems all right so if she really is a good offensive magia focused of character then this would be a pretty good personal but if she isn't 
this wouldn't be a good personal. So let's see. Let's see if she actually is that. And we see immediately she's defensive favorite. She's defensive favorite. So of course already her being offensive doesn't actually quite work out. So her HP is terrible. I don't know why, but her HP is terrible. Her defense is pretty all right. Keep in mind she's capped to four star as well. But if she gets capped, to, if she gets uncapped to five star, her defense would be quite all right. Her defense would actually be quite all right. Uh, her attack would be workable at least, but still not that great. Her HP would still be pretty bad. But we see that she's still mostly a defensive favorite, I guess. She really loves nature, though. I need to keep pointing that out because it's also like there was like, oh my god, she really, really loves nature. Uh, look at that, like she's surrounded by nature, she really loves nature, she's living in nature, knowledge of plants and animals on nature, 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 oh, uh, yeah, so uh, her connect gives damage up and critical hit, which does actually sound pretty alright, I've always said that if you want a connect that does critical hit, you need some sort of damage up or attack up or just anything else that increases the amount of damage you do on top of that to really push it home, how much damage you're doing um, on on a critical hit, because just critical hit itself is not strong enough. So this is all right, this is all right. However, once again, because she's four star, other characters that have similar connects to this, if they are five star, will just have bigger numbers. They'll have like 70% chance of critical hit. They'll have like a 40% damage up. So she's kind of missing out on a little bit of those numbers because she's capped to four star. But once again, if she ever gets uncapped to five star, she will get a boost to those numbers and that connect will be looking way better. But still, it's a decent connect. It's a decent connect for a straight up, like, going ham on someone with just discs. Next up, we have the Magia. Uh, what does it do? Uh, it deals 80% of damage to one enemy. Sure, let's keep in mind, by the way, she is a forest type, so she'll screw up f uh, a water type, really hard, aqua type. Um, and it gives us emissions up. Feels like there's an effect missing on here. Feels like if she reaches 5 star, there's going to be another effect on here. And just stars emerald resistance up not that amazing i mean sure there are some quests maybe where you can say to yourself i'm getting screwed over by stars emeralds wouldn't it be great if i had someone who could g give my entire team like 50 percent stars emerald resistance for three turns oh my god that would be amazing if you ever find a quest like that you know that you can take the orc i mean chica uh with you and she's gonna be fine but in any other instance this kind of feels not finished. This like feels like an unfinished Magia. There is an effect missing on here. But if she does reach 5 star, maybe it's going to get another effect on it. Maybe it's going to be way better. Look at the Spirit Enhancement. What do we see? Nothing special. It's interesting enough. She has 30% stealth and resistance instead of the usual like 20 or 25%. So 30% is quite a lot, and I think it's because she's so in tune with nature that she is able to shrug off uh, the effects of status aimers, I don't know. Uh, more importantly though, her active is once again pretty alright. It gives 20% attack up, some regenerate HP and stats resistance up, so once again, it gives both a bit of attack and both a bit of staying power on the field for 3 turns. Keep in mind that for, if you activate this for 3 turns, you have a total of 60% status aim and resistance. 60% passive. If you have a Madokami on the team at 4 slot, you're basically immune to Stars Aemons almost. You're almost immune to Stars Aemons just for 3 turns, just like that. Uh, you don't even need to do anything special. No Magia required. Just push a button. Nah, that's simple. And you also, on top of that, have 7% regenerate HP. And if you, like I said, just have that Madokami uh, on your team for Stars and Resistance, you have even more regenerate HP. So you have like 11 to 12% regenerate HP. Just, just like that. For three turns that's kind of crazy uh and then you also have 20 percent attack up sure she doesn't have much she doesn't have much attack but still that sounds pretty all right that sounds like a pretty all right active to me that's a pretty good active uh, and it's only an eight turn cooldown which means there's only five turns in between you activating this ability again yeah so, so the thing is chica to me looks like a character that could actually be pretty all right like a really good free to play choice for just a straight up attacker that has magia options that has defensive options that is that has a specific niche that might be important on some challenge quests in uh, to put it in words the stars aim resistance niche uh, but she's kind of missing numbers on her connection she's missing effects from her magia that seems like it's kind of unfinished um her stats need more work on it so this is another character that I would look out for. If she ever gets uncapped, she might be alright. But right now, 
she's just missing a bunch of stuff that she really needs over other characters that are uncapped, so keep her at the back of your head if she ever gets uncapped. Other than that, hmm, no specific need to raise her right now. Next up we have a character that you really do not need to raise right now at all, it's Asuka. The canonically probably least intelligent character in the entire game, who gets repeatedly called out for being incredibly bad at everything, um, both in-game and, like, both in story and in gameplay as being a pretty terrible character. How terrible is she actually? Well, first off, she's a blast type gorilla. That looks pretty good, right? Being a blast gorilla? If we look at, if you look back at the old NA or just the old JP uh, meta about one and a half years ago, like before Spirit Enhancement happened, before Spirit Enhancement happened, it was all about blast. Blast was the thing to have. And in that sort of meta, this looked pretty good. Just have a blast gorilla. Just being a blast gorilla already gave you a lot of uh, potential in any team. Now, times have changed. Uh, on one hand, times have changed more towards a Magia focused approach. And secondly, even on a, a Blast team, how good is she actually? So if we look at her personal, it's terrible. If you look at her stats, we see that she is defensive focused. I mean, that's fine. You can be a tank that's Blast focused, right? I mean, it's not the best because Blasting is for spe specifically exactly for dealing damage. And if you're someone who can't deal damage with a disc setup, that's for dealing damage. That kind of sucks. But eh, maybe she has some cool connect or some cool magia. Although Magia with Blast type, I don't know. But let's just check out what else she has. Okay, that gives Provoke and Damage Cut, which I guess purely defensively can be used to be an alright defensive connect, because it makes sure that the character you're connecting to the, to give that damage cut to actually gets attacked, and that's usually something that is kind of a problem a lot of the times. But yeah, it gets someone attacked and they take basically no damage, that's pretty awesome. Offensively, it does nothing. Offensively, it actually does exactly nothing and if you're on it in a battle if you're in any battle where there's no chance that your team will die anyway like if it's even a lot of ex challenge quests where i think to myself yeah there's no way that no matter what i do i can't die it's not gonna happen it's not gonna happen right um and on that sort of on those sort of battles i kind of like this is terrible it's completely useless might as well have no effects on it at all so her connect is not the greatest at all what about her magia though? So it damages one enemy, uh, whatever. It provokes to self, regenerates HP to self, and damage cuts to self. This is actually an amazing tank magia. Like anyone who plays purely as a tank, this is a really good magia for that. It makes sure the tank takes the damage while at the same time surviving. That's really good. The doppel is basically the same, but, and here's the important bit, extends the damage cut to all allies. What? That's amazing! 45% damage cut to all allies for three turns? What? That's amazing! That's a really good tank double. That's one of an amazing, that's one of the best tank doubles in the entire game! Right, right, she's, she's, she's a basketball. She, she's a basketball, so she doesn't actually get to Magia or even Doppel ever at all with any sort of speed whatsoever so that kind of sucks really hard the best part like i can even tell you even after reading spirit enhancement the best part about asuka is the fact that her double gives damage cut to all allies which sounds amazing but she's a blast gorilla so um she's never gonna get there if this magia or if this, if this Magia and Double were both on a, let's say, an Excel-focused tank, even an Excel Gorilla tank, that tank would be amazing. Like, if there was on a, a on any sort of Excel-focused tank, this would be one of the best Magia Double, uh, like, defensive Magia Doubles in the game. Purely defensive-wise. It would be amazing, game-breaking almost, like, purely defensive speaking, I mean. But on a Blast Gorilla, who has no other way of getting to Magia fast. Ah, why? Why, Asuka? Why do you have to be so contrarian to basic game design? Moving on, though, we have a Spear Enhancement, which at least has 20% MP gain up. But what does 20% 20 MP, 20 MP gain up even mean when you're a Blast Gorilla? What else do we have? We have 20% Excel MP gain up. You have one Excel disc. She has the 
biggest XL bonuses in the entire game and the biggest MP bonuses in the entire game, and she's a Blast Gorilla. You know, you don't build MP or use Excel discs when you have Blast discs instead. Why? <sighs> At least she has 20% chance to counter, 35% chance to activate, and you guess what? Guess what? She's a defense, she, uh, she's not a defense type, and that kind of sucks. It's actually really, really hard to not a defense type, because she doesn't get provoke. She's super duper defensive, super duper defensive in everything she has, <coughs> and she doesn't have provoke. You know that she has a flower uh, bed memoria, like she has a four star memoria that features her, that gives guardian, I think? Either guardian or provoke? I, I don't know exactly, but it gives either guardian or provoke. And that's supposed to be like a, the Asuka Memoria. The Asuka Memoria gives either Guardian Provoke. She doesn't have that. She doesn't have that. Why? Oh my fucking god, why? Why are you so contrary into good game design, Asuka? And then she has attack up at max health and defense up at max health, which sounds good on paper. And she realized, wait a second, she's a tank. She's supposed to take hits. Her Magi even makes her take hits. But when you take hits, you're not at full health. You're not at full health anymore. So you immediately lose this bonus after a single attack hits you. And you can be like, "Oh well," but you have to regenerate HP from her passive and through her magia, and you have the damage cut, so you take less damage, and it's easy to regenerate back up to full health. But even so, even so, this is just not good enough to make any sort of impact because the attacker part doesn't matter because she has basically no attack. The defense up part doesn't matter because you have a bunch of damage card anyway. Uh, and if you were a tank, it probably takes about eight or nine hits to kill you, right? Eight or nine hits to kill you. If the first of those hits is a little bit weaker, doesn't really make a big difference in the whole picture, right? So overall, I, I like the sentiment. I like the sentiment. Doesn't quite work though on a tank. Um, would have been better if it was a critical health, to be honest. Uh, blast damage up? Oh, now we want to be a blast character. Oh, now we, want, now we want to blast? After her entire kit being about, hey, our magi and doppel is pretty good, uh, and I guess we can tank a little bit, now you're suddenly like, oh yeah, I guess we can blast as well. What? What? Th th the thing about this character is that she has things, she has so many things rolled into her character, that would be great if they were on other characters. Like her, like these two notes right here would actually be really awesome on a pure blast character. On a pure blast character, these two notes would actually be quite all right. Um, then we have her, uh, whoops, her Magia and Doppel. Guess what? On a Magia character who is defense, like on a defensive Magia character, this would be really awesome. But she's a blast gorilla. Why? Her stats also are more geared towards being Excel focused because blast discs are for dealing damage. She doesn't have attack. Why? Why any of this? <sighs> the, the devs kind of really had no idea what to actually do with Asuka, so she's a kind of pish, a mishmash of really weird ideas that just don't fit well together. And with that, I have to end this video. So yeah. That was said. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell and I'll see you guys next time.